Hey, you. Yes? Why aren't you selling? I don't know. Okay, could you, like, sell, please? Maybe. Maybe what? What do you mean, maybe? Maybe. Mm. Okay, what do I need to do to make you sell? Um, I don't know. Oh my god, you're impossible. For those who are new here, my name is Star Lamore, founder of the Handmade Elf Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And one of the most common questions that I see in my YouTube comments is this. Starla, what do I do with listings in my shop that aren't selling? Let me first start by saying that having listings in your shop that aren't selling does not harm your overall shop, rank, or quality score. And if you notice that you have a few listings that sell a lot, while others seem to not sell at all, this is actually quite normal too. Etsy recommends listings that are selling more than listings that aren't, which is where this whole listing quality score comes in. If you're interested in learning more about how Etsy's algorithm works, be sure to check out this free SEO workshop up here. But in today's video, we are going to discuss steps you should take in order to revive listings in your shop that aren't selling, whether they used to sell in the past and suddenly have stopped selling or they simply have never sold at all. Before we dive into the details, I want to take a moment to give a quick shout out to this week's featured shop. Hey you, thanks for your love and support. If you'd like to submit for your own shout out, tag Handmade Alphas in a photo or screenshot of yourself watching this video, either in your Instagram feed or Instagram stories. Approaching your business and listings at a scientific level means using a slow process of elimination in order to accurately determine the exact issue that may be leading to a lack of sales. All too often, sellers will come to me saying, I changed my photos, my SEO, and my pricing, and I still can't figure out what's going on. When it comes to conducting experiments, we need to ensure that all experiments are isolated in order to evaluate which changes are the ones that made a difference. For example, if we were watering plants with coffee, water, and Mountain Dew, we wouldn't be able to determine which liquid helped our plants to grow if we simply dumped all of these liquids into the same pot. So before making changes to your listings, let's discuss the order of operations that I personally find to be the best method of sorting out what's actually going on. First, before you touch anything at all, it's important to ask yourself, is my product in demand? This sounds like a really basic question, but brands fail all the time by introducing products into the marketplace that no one asked for. And often as creators, we create based on personal emotions and creativity, which may not serve a genuine demand in the marketplace, which is fine if you're a hobbyist, but not so much if you wanna build a sustainable business income. In order to measure the demand of your product, first, you need to determine what your item is on its most base level. Level. If you're selling an LED castle-shaped acrylic bookend, you're ultimately selling a bookend. If you're selling a golden abalone shell necklace, you're selling a shell necklace. If you're selling a monogrammed slate whiskey coaster, you're selling a coaster. Once you've determined the root of your product, head over to eRank.com and pop this term into the keyword tool. From here, you can see the estimated monthly search volumes for the type of item that you want to sell. If these search volumes are dramatically low compared to the level of competition you see, you'll likely struggle to compete. And though there's no golden number you should look for in terms of monthly search volumes, as every niche will be a bit different depending on the time of year, I highly recommend steering clear of any ideas that display less than a thousand monthly search when developing a new product. Now, assuming that the type of product that you're selling is in demand, we can rule this out and move on to our next question. Are your photos scaring away buyers? It can be easy to see all of your thumbnails on your storefront page in comparison with each other and assume that they look okay. But remember, this isn't where most shoppers will be seeing your items. Most shoppers will be seeing these thumbnails on a search page next to thousands of other sellers. And if those sellers have better photos than you, it doesn't matter matter how good your product is. A bad photo of a good product equals a bad product in the eyes of your shopper. If you need help with product photography, I recommend checking out my friend Christina Nicole's channel, which I'll link up here and down below. But even with great photos, sometimes buyers still won't click. For example, back in October of 2017, I listed this necklace in my first Etsy shop. The customer was able to customize their owl with any of the crystal colors shown on the thumbnail. And because it was fall, I chose to use Topaz as the main 
main thumbnail example. For months, the pendant didn't sell. So I decided to experiment. In November, right before the holiday rush, I changed the color of the eyes from topaz to aquamarine. The photo itself didn't change, and all of the same color choices were still displayed right on the photo. But this light change in my thumbnail resulted in this product's sales exploding, quickly making it a bestseller. Even with great photos, things like color, props, lighting, and your background can dramatically change customer perceptions. So if you've got a listing in your shop that isn't selling, it may be worth your time to try experimenting with different thumbnails. Speaking of photos, it's important to remember that our product photography is a window that makes a collection of pixels on a screen seem tangible. Customers can't touch your product or feel its texture. They can't smell your product through a screen, nor can they understand what that product might look like when they're wearing it. This is the job of your product photos, to turn a collection of pixels into a real and tangible item. And to do this, I highly recommend ensuring that all 10 of your listing photos are filled out. One of the number one reasons that customers abandon their carts without checking out is overall confusion about an item. If the customer can't immediately understand everything about your item, they may not feel safe making a purchase. Not to mention, online scams have made it easier than ever for vague product photos to lead customers to make bad purchasing decisions. This recently happened to me a few days ago when I purchased this listing as a Christmas gift on walmart.com. Though the product was described as being a three-dimensional sculpture, what I ultimately received was a cheap 2D printed piece of wood. A quick reverse image search led me to the real listing where the product photos had been stolen from. The more product photos you can provide, the more you are able to show a buyer exactly what they will be receiving. So don't leave things out like close-ups to show texture, the front, back, or inside of your product, the inside of the product, or how the product may look in its intended environment. If adding more photos and experimenting with thumbnails for a few months doesn't result in more sales, you can move on to the next experiment on the list, which is price. When it comes to pricing your items, it's important to become familiar with the anchor of your industry. This is defined as the reference point buyers use when associating the value of a product relative to its price. For example, if I showed you this pencil and asked you how much you'd be willing to pay for it, you might give me a range of anywhere between a few cents and a dollar. But if I told you that this pencil costs $10, you'd likely want to know what on earth could justify this price. You already have an anchor for what you believe this product should cost. On the flip side, if I showed you two identical diamond engagement rings, but one was labeled at $10,000 while the other was only labeled at $100, you would likely assume that the $100 ring was an inferior product. This increases the perception of value much higher the more the ring's price increases, because for an engagement ring, we tend to have a much higher anchor in mind. So the question is, what is your anchor price? How do you know if you're pricing too high or too low? Both can turn off buyers. So it's important to understand the anchor of your industry specifically. It's also why fancy pricing formulas aren't the best method for pricing handmade products on Etsy, since the results will be a bit too subjective between industries. Instead, I recommend heading back to the E-Rank keyword tool. Search again for the root keyword associated with your item, then scroll down to the common price points for your industry. From here, identify the highest price points and try to set your price around the top 10% of your industry. Remember, Etsy is the place to compete in quality, brand authority, and customer service, not in price. So find your anchor and price at the top. If you've rolled out demand, thumbnails, photo quantity, and pricing, it may be time to move on to SEO. And remember, changes to your tags and titles on Etsy should be the last resort and should be reserved for listings that aren't already selling. You never know what combination of keywords Etsy is ranking you for in search, so even if it looks like your SEO could use improvement, never change the tags and titles of a listing that is performing well. Otherwise, you may cut off the flow of traffic for a term that you were ranking for. Keyword optimization of your listings is a step-by-step -step process that sounds super complicated but can actually be really easy and fun. However, teaching this information takes a little more time than we have for today's video. So if you need a little help with your SEO, be sure to watch my full SEO tutorial up here for physical products, vintage products, and digital products. Or watch this video up here if you specifically sell print-on-demand products. Overall, success on Etsy is an ongoing science experiment that requires a lot of testing and monitoring in order to determine what works, 
versus what doesn't work for your listings. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Bubbers, cue the funky lo-fi beat. Maybe. Mm. Eggnog. Uh. <laughs>